Bites of a bite, no reora, in neora, yef, who is said no, yes, I'd come. Good afternoon. I'm so glad to be here with you and sharing God's word as well as this message with you. And we remind you that we do all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Sunday in this Lenten, this golden chain of Lenten Sundays, is an important one if you're one of those who is scared and fearful of tomorrow. Today is called Advent Sunday. It is about the second coming of Christ. A lot of people don't know it, but the Armenian Church does talk about it. In fact, we've given an entire Sunday for this message. I want you to listen to very carefully because what you're going to learn today is something that, well, it's very unusual when you talk about the second coming of Christ. Now, first of all, let's say that the Armenian Church, as well as all the Orthodox Church, as well as all Christian churches that bear the name of Jesus Christ, have to believe in this because Jesus, as he ascended into heaven, said, I will be with you until the close of the ages. And he did promise to come back, and we confess this in our faith. In fact, we say this in the, in, well, in, in the faith that we profess through the, the Council of Nicaea back in the 4th century. This was codified, this was put together in the Nicene Creed. We say we, he is to come with the same body. He is to come to judge the living and the dead. Now this is, this is uh, what we believe, that there is a second coming of Christ. And so what we do in this life, a lot of times, out of fear, which is the worst way to live, but out of fear what we do, unfortunately, we live with this idea of the second coming. And this is where I need to share with you what today's prescription is. It comes to us from Holy Scripture, and you're going to be surprised at this. Because you see, it's not about tomorrow that we live. Unfortunately, a lot of times, you know, we get scared and we allow fear to guide us. And when you do that, what happens? When fear guides you, you can't move forward. In fact, if you look at your life, you'll find that the biggest hurdles that you have in life is because of fear. Hurdles are those obstacles that prevent you from going forward. Once you can put fear away, then you can move forward. In fact, look at all the successful people quote-unquote success as well. People who are successful with money, people who are successful in relationships, people who are successful in, in life are people that have been able to put fear to one side and have been able to what we call risk it. Take that risk. And Jesus calls us to that life of risk, basically to put fear to one side. You see, in times that we're in right now, unfortunately, we get carried away with what life gives us. Life comes and it hits us at a fast rate. Because of, well, because of the media right now, life, whatever happens today throughout the world is immediately reported to you. You can pick it up on your computer, your television screen. I mean, there is not a means by which you cannot see the world. In other words, you have instant access to reality. And this can be overwhelming. Because you hear of an earthquake, you hear of a tsunami, you hear of revolution, you have, hear of an overthrow of government, and you put all this together in your head and you say, okay, this is it, somebody's pulling the plug on life. No. In fact, you've got this theory going on about 2012. And you say, okay, the end is coming because I heard it on TV, because I read it in a book, because they made a movie about it. And so this must be the end. And then you get some people who open up the scriptures and start telling you, well, you know, Jesus said this, and look what's going on, and look what all this is happening, and let's read the book of Revelation. And then you start reading Revelation, and what happens? You say, oh, no, this is it. God help me. I hope I'm saved. I hope so too. But here's the reality. This is the reality check you need to check in with. Is what our Lord Jesus Christ says so specifically. He says that time no one knows. Not the angels in heaven. Not the Son but only God. Only God the Father knows. And he doesn't allow anyone else to know that time. 
He says, worry about today. Today has enough problems to take care of itself. What a message. How do you prepare for tomorrow? Jesus tells us very specifically, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries and problems of its own. Take care of today. He says, look at the birds of the air. They, they don't worry about tomorrow, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Look at the lilies of the field. He says, look at them. He are, they are so beautiful out there that not even Solomon on all his splendor was attired like one of these. And yet your heavenly Father takes care of them. How much more will he take care of you? Don't worry about tomorrow. Well, you say, well, the end of the world's coming. How can I prepare for it? Well, if you really believe that the end of the world is coming, or if all these people believe that the end of the world is coming, right? What would the logical thing to be, be to do? Go out there and just enjoy yourself, right? Who cares about it? Right? Max out your credit cards. Do whatever you want. But that's not what you're seeing people do, right? They're still making the movies. You see, all of these people that are telling you something are driven not by the word of God, but they are driven by the dollar, what sells out there. Now, go back to where we're at. And that's why the Lenten journey is so important, that you follow this path of Lent. What our church fathers give us for today, you'll be interested to know, the reading, the passage that they give to us today. They say that a man came up to Jesus and said, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. That's the passage for the second coming. What are our church fathers telling us? If you want to be prepared for the second coming of Christ, you know what the best preparation is? Follow what he taught us at his first coming. He came. That's the only reality we have right now. And he taught us something very specific. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. We don't need to complicate it more than that. You want to be prepared for the second coming? First of all, do what he taught us. Go out there and love people. In the Gospel of Matthew, there's a very interesting uh, section in the Sermon on the Mount. I invite you to read that. It is, the Sermon on the Mount, of course, is Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Read that. That's essential for every Christian to know. In there, there's a very specific passage that Jesus said, if you go to the altar of God and you take your gifts to the altar of God and you remember that your brother has a grievance with you, leave your gift at the altar, go and make amends with your brother, and then come back to give your, to give your offering. What does that mean? It means that there's something more important than the worship of God. It is our ability to get along with one another. Yes, you heard me say it right. Something more important than God. It's the love that we have for one another. If you don't love one another, if you're not in communion with one another, what does it mean to say, I'm in communion with God? What does it mean to say, I am saved? God, look at me. I am going to heaven. No. Jesus says, many people will come and say, Lord, Lord, I know you. And he'll say, get away from me. I do not know you. You see, the Christian is called to a very real life in this world, to love people, to care for people, to love God with all your mind, body, and soul. What does that mean? It means to be able to put God first in your life, to be able to see that love. St. John tells us that God is love, to put love in front of our lives, to have love love, to be able to have that love with all your body, mind, and soul, to be able to share that, to preach it with one, one thing with your mouth, but to live it every single day of your life. Do you want to be ready for the second coming of Christ? Do what he taught us at his first coming. That is the greatest, that is the greatest challenge in front of every Christian right now. Yes, we hear of earthquakes. We hear of tsunamis. We hear of revolutions. The, the world situation looks very grave many times. Don't forget that this has been happening for centuries. Every few years, 
people come forward and predict the end of the world. In fact, one cult, the Jehovah's Witness, began predicting the end of the world. They said it was going to come in the 1914. They said when it didn't come in 1914, they said 1917. Then they said 1922. And until today, they keep protecting him because they don't know Holy Scripture. Jesus says that day and time, nobody knows. Not the angels, not the Son, only your Heavenly Father. Don't worry about that. Don't start predicting it. If God decides that tomorrow the end of the world is coming, that's it. You can't argue with him. You can't say, well, I saw a movie, and in the movie it said it was going to be in 2012. You can really say that to God? If God decides that it's going to come in 100 years, you can't stand there and say, well, you know what? I, I thought it was going to come in 50 years, and uh, you know, you can't argue. That's his domain. That's God's business. What is your domain? What is your business? Love. Care. Share. Get out there. Do something with your life. Make your life productive every single day. Leaving what is God's God's and taking charge of what is yours. Am I loving? Am I caring for people? Am I looking at the beauty of God's wonders? Am I looking at those beautiful mountains and thanking God for such a beautiful sight? Am I looking at that ocean and enjoying that mist on my face and realizing that that mist cannot be created anywhere but for the Word of God? Am I looking at that, that beautiful smile in my child's face and realizing that God is inside of my child as God is everywhere and enjoying that love that He places everywhere? You see, this is the challenge in front of each of us on this Sunday of Advent as well as every Sunday. Now this happens to be the last Sunday that we commemorate during the Lenten season. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and we're out of Lent, and we begin the, the, the series of events that take place in Holy Week. I'm going to invite you to get involved. Most importantly, not just here on TV, not on the internet, but get involved in your church. Go to the diocesan website, pull down that, that little tab that says parishes. Find a parish that's close to you. Get involved in the real life, meeting people, sharing with people, finding opportunities to love and care for people. Get involved wherever you can. And I invite you to join me personally. I'm on the web at epostle.net. You'll find broadcasts and podcasts where you can get involved in different things that we do. But most importantly, give your life to a purpose that's higher than yourself. Not being fearful, not staying on one side and saying, what's going to happen tomorrow? but engaging in life today. And I invite you to get involved wherever you can because the, the presence of God is so needed in this world. In all that we do, I look forward to seeing you next week and remind you that we do all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.